Dr. Preeti, good morning. Uh, today, let's begin with the version control system, the first rule in our course or the first rule in the CICD pipeline from where the pipeline generally get triggered, like why it happens here, why this comes as a first tool in the pipeline and all we'll see. But first, before that, let's learn what a version control system is. Some of you might be aware of it or new to it. So like I'll go uh, from the beginning, like first let us understand what is a version control system. Anyone have any thoughts what a version control system is? Anyone want to share any inputs? What a version control system does? Uh, it helps maintaining the version. So when various versions of software are released, uh, it it gives us a very organized way of maintaining versions of software. Okay. It tracks new updates, man. Okay. Yes, any more inputs? Okay, to understand this, let me take a simple example. This is some uh, shared folder or shared drive, right? Uh, and here there are some project files kept and shared across the team. I'm talking about a scenario without version control system. So this is some uh, uh, folder or some location where all the project files are kept and shared across the team. So there are two people, person A and person B. They want to work on this and both of them want to make uh, changes to this file one. So they got this file downloaded to their local computer. They made changes and uh, person A kept this file back after making his changes on day one. Let's say uh, he kept his changes back on day one. This person kept his changes back on day two. I'm talking about a scenario without version control system. So both of them got the same file to their system at the same time, made changes and put them back on day one and day two. So after day two, this file one will have which person changes? Will it have both person changes or which person changes will be there after day two on this uh, file one? Without person, person, yeah. person B's changes will be there. Uh... Only person B, right? So what is yeah. happening? Person B's changes are overwriting person A changes, right? Person A doesn't know this. This is happening without knowing, right? One person changes are being overwritten by the other. And imagine if this is happening with a team of 10 people with a hundred so files shared across, you can imagine how the changes would be, how the project would, would be messed up, right? In some time, the project may be corrupted, isn't it? So this is one of the challenge where uh, uh, where people are trying to modify or work on the same file at the same time. So how can we handle this? If each person is making some changes and if they have to check uh, if, they, they, if their changes are saved, secured properly or not, that doesn't work on reality, right? They have to work on the functional requirements. They have to check if they are meeting the client expectations or not. Checking this manually would not work. That's where version control systems work, comes in. It helps people work simultaneously on the same files. Right? So that uh, they can work on the same file, but still a version control system will, allow, will not allow overwriting, will not allow ignoring the changes. It will help uh, making the changes secure, safe. Right? So that's one of the reasons where version control systems comes in. Not only that, Let's suppose you are working on some file one uh, and version one. Client came and said, gave some modifications and they want to make a version two. Suppose you have edited this file or modified this file and made version two. So yes, version two is there. But after a few days, client want to go back to the version one because version two is having some problem. They want to go back. But you have deleted or edited the same file, right? So don't ever do that. Maintain the versions, maintain the backups. Means what you have to do there, maintain the backup of version one and maintain new version, version two. So that if you want to go back, if you want to revert, that's possible. So maintaining backups, maintaining versions is possible through this version control system, right? And also let's say application is working fine till seven o'clock today. 
Okay. It's doing good. Something went wrong and from 7.15 application got crashed. It was uh, uh, like uh, bringing a lot of disaster, right? You want to just make a sure to revert to the previous state. But you want to know what changes made during this time, right? Means you need to have a detailed log. Like which person made, person A made changes to file 2 on line number 9 at 7.5 or at 7, 9, which led to these changes, right? So if you have this kind of detailed log, which person made what changes at what time on which file, you could bring the system back without impacting the business, right? A detailed logging. Again, this cannot be done manually. Developers have to work on their functional requirements, client expectations. They can't sit and do these things manually, right? So there comes a version control system again, which provides this kind of logging so that every person is accountable on what changes they were making, right? These are some of the things what a version control system does. It helps to maintain the versions of the code, maintain the backups, maintain the log, allow multiple people working on the same file at the same time without project getting messed up or corrupted. All these are possible with version control systems. Not only this, many other things. And what do you version control? Basically, what are these files? These files could be any static files, any program files, means any static files. Executables are not allowed on version control system. Any static files, it might be Java program, C, Perl, Python, whatever it is, PHP, anything, irrespective of the language, you can store your files. Of course, normal text files, config files, scripts, anything can be version controlled. Here, uh, first, We'll be learning version control system with respect to the, these three aspects of maintaining it simultaneously, maintaining the backups, logs, and all. From this perspective, we'll learn first, right? Like how developers are storing the code, how they are maintaining the version. You may be having a question, I'm not a developer, why do I need it, right? Do you have that question? Anyone have the question? You're not developers, why should you learn this? Anyone want to answer or have the same question? Anyone in the class? Anyone there in the class? Am I audible? Uh, yeah, yeah, you are audible. Okay, thank you. Thanks for confirming. So, um, yeah, uh, even DevOps teams do have their configuration files, right? Ma uh, Kubernetes, manifest files, Terraform config files, Ansible playbooks, all of these should be version controlled. That's the reason everyone, not only DevOps person, these days even testers do uh, use this. They do have their test scripts. So they, they'll maintain their test scripts and version control system. So I would say everyone in IT, even though you don't want to move to DevOps, everyone should learn this version controlling. That's the first aspect, first phase of a version control system. Then how is it used in the pipeline? Yes, whenever from the perspective of pipeline also, we will learn. This is from the perspective of managing your files. Be you are a DevOps person or a developer or a tester or ops person, whoever you are, you, want, you have to manage your files with the version control system this way. So first we we'll learn from this perspective. Second perspective is, Let's say there is a development team, like yesterday I mentioned, development team will be there who write the code. Whenever they write the code and place it in version control system, you should create a pipeline in such a way that whenever they make some change, automatically pipeline get triggers. It will automatically pull the code, build it, execute the test cases, containerize it, deploy it on Kubernetes for high availability and provide it to end users and monitor the application and send the feedback, the pipeline which I have shown you yesterday, right? So that's another perspective. So that way also we learn, first this is the perspective, we'll be learning version control system. Sure. Am I clear with this, Inda? Yes. So this is what uh, we'll be learning here. So the, now that we understood version control system, okay, before going uh, ahead, any questions here from anyone? Am I clear or any confusions? Are we good? Appreciate your quick responses. A thumbs up will do. If you have any questions, you can feel free to ask. 
no pc everything fine as of now sure all right so now that we understood what a version control system is let's talk about types of version control systems version control systems based on uh, based on their architecture were categorized as centralized version control system and distributed version control systems centralized version control system as the name says there will be a central server or remote repository whatever you call this this can be called as a central server or remote repository and these are the workstations of individual developers or devops person whomever you call Okay, this is the uh, workstation of each person. So they will connect to the central server or remote repository, get the code changes, make their changes and then put it back. That's how uh, they work, right? Uh, the Technically, these terms are called check-in and check-out. Check-out is downloading to their system. Check-in is uploading back to the central server. Anyway, you don't need to get uh, into technical terms of it. This is how central version control system works. There were certain drawbacks or challenges. First thing is always there should be network connectivity. Let's suppose there is network disconnected. Entire work will be halted, right? If you don't have this connectivity to the server, you cannot work on it. So network connection is important. You need to have network connectivity always. Second thing is it's like a single source of truth. For any reason, if this is crashed or gone or lost, chances of recovery are less. Right, it works like a single source of truth. Recovery chances are less. Recovery is a challenge. Right, so these are the challenges with the centralized version control system. And which tools falls under this category? SVN, TFS, Pairforce falls under this category. These are all different version control system which implements this architecture of centralized version controlling. To overcome these challenges and drawbacks, there came distributed version control system. And how this works? If you see here, this is the workstation of individual collaborator. Okay, and as usual, this is the central server or remote repository. There were two repositories here. here. Hmm central server or remote repository and then this is local repository. Every contributor have got their own local repository which is copy of central repository. Again, they don't work on this local. They work on some other folder called working directory. They make changes here, move to local. From local, they move to remote. Right? Only when you move your changes to remote or central server, others can see the changes. Until then, the changes cannot be seen by others. As long as they are only in your local repository, no one else can see those changes. Right? So, that's how distributed architecture works. And first thing, how does it overcome network issue? You need network connectivity only to pull or push. See here, pull or push means like, okay, once your changes are done, once you are done with your changes, then only you make it available for others, right? Then you do a pull. Also, when you want, sorry, then only you make a push, I'm sorry. And whenever you want to make a copy of a remote, you will pull. So pull and push commands are less frequent commands. These are less frequently used when compared with a local repos. Means majority of the work happens here. These are more frequent. These uh, actions are more frequent. Means to work with your local repos, you need to just access your hard disk. You don't need network connectivity. Means let's suppose this network connectivity is like having some issues, network failures. Still, you can continue working on your local. You need this network connectivity only to push or pull, which are less frequent. Until then, you can still continue your work locally. So entire work is not halted. Also, this uh, version control systems uh, work really faster because majority of the times you'll be working on your local, which is obviously faster. Also, if the central server is gone or lost, chances of recovery are more because everyone is having a copy of their local repository, which is nothing but like, which is a copy of your remote. So chances of recovery are also more. There are chances to recover from any of them. Right? So that's how it overcomes the drawbacks. Remember, it will have two repositories, 
central repository and the local repository. Any questions? Yeah, please. Yeah, tell me. Yes, let's see, actually, if that is the case, uh, if the server uh, is fails, everybody have their local repository. I do agree that. But uh, see, for example, person A changes uh, something and he updated into the local update, local repository. Like that, person B also did that. But whenever the server fails, it won't have the um, uh, person B everything, right? Person B changes or whatever it is, right? See, I said chances of recovery are more. It's not that you will get exact copy of it. Chances of recovery are more when you compare with the previous architecture. Okay. Huh. And uh, there are certain tools which follow this distributed architecture. Like Git follows this distributed version control system architecture. Git, Mercurial, Fossils comes under this category. Fossils is another tool falls under this distributed architecture. Any more queries? Is this clear, the architecture? Ma'am, I have a question. Uh, so when we talk about the local repository, so a person pulls it to the local repository and starts working. So the local repository, can we compare it to the cache memory in the computer system? Uh, local repository will be directly another folder, uh, Rekha. Like it will be okay. folder in your system. And okay. the folder will be exactly a copy of your remote. Like you will do okay. machines, you will get a copy of it. exact commands are clone. We will learn them. But yeah. Okay. So, hmm. so basically it's on our hard drive only. Yes. Yes. It's a okay. Thank you. Folder. Yeah. Thank you. Right. So this is the distributed version control architecture and Git falls under this category and uh, you can see this graph. There were so many version control systems. As I am talking about, right, there were so many tools under each category. Like see, SVN, Git, DFS, Fossils, Mercury and so on. Here in this course, I am covering the very widely used ones so that you get more exposure. Also, when you expertise master this, working or switching to other tools is very easy. But anyhow, this is very widely used. Particularly in the modern DevOps projects, Git is very widely used. You can see the graph, how widely Git is used when compared with other tools. Also, if you learn Git and master it, it's very easy to work with any other tools if required. But there will be more chances of Git only. Right, this is the graph from 2020 from Google Trends. You can also check out the latest graph. So the Git is very widely used and we'll be learning Git from basic still advanced. Like I started from what is version control system. I'll take you to the real scenarios and uh, see the uh, all the real use cases. By the completion of this tool and implement it in the pipeline, you will be able to clear all interview questions related to Git and use Git in your projects. That would be the agenda uh, in each section. So uh, we have understood the different version control systems, their architecture on high level, uh, right? So, uh, uh, sorry, Priti, I just want to ask a question. Like, uh, we just uh, want to know about like Git and what's uh, like some other are also there, Git, GitLab, GitHub. So what's the difference between them? Those are different tools. See, these are version control systems. Whatever I mentioned, Git, SVN, TFS, Fossils, these are under the same category. GitHub is a different thing which works like a remote. GitHub will be covered. GitLab is a continuous integration tool. That's a different tool. That doesn't fall under this category. Both of them, GitHub, GitLab, don't fall under this category. Okay. GitHub works like this remote repository. GitHub will be covered. GitLab is a continuous integration server like Jenkins. It's a totally in a different category. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Just a second.
it falls under this category, like under continuous integration tools, like see GitLab, do you see GitLab CI? So this is where it falls under the category of continuous integration tools, not in this category. All right, so let's come back and let's talk about the architecture of Git in particular. So we were talking about a local repository, right? See here, this is on your system. Okay, this will be on your system. Of course, this local repository, all of that comes into your local system only. So let's say this is your local computer. Now, uh, this is your local repository, the yellow box. Again, you don't directly work on it. Rather, you will work on some other folder called a working repository, sorry, working directory, right? You will make changes here. Again, after making changes here, you cannot directly do this. Like you cannot move your changes this way. No, this is not allowed. Okay, then there is an architecture or there is a flow how your changes would move. First, your changes should move to another layer called staging area. The commands, git add, git commit, there were so many commands we will learn, but just understand. You should move them to another folder or another layer called staging area. It can also be called as index area or a staging area. It's called a virtual layer, right? It's a, like a virtual layer. So first you have to move your changes here. And from staging area only, your changes goes to local. This is called as a git tree or else the uh, architecture of git. This is how your changes move. From working directly to staging, from staging to local. From local only, you can push to remote and make it available for others. Right, three steps before your changes goes to remote. And you may be having a question, what is the staging area? Why do you need it, right? Like I told you, it's an index layer or else it's like a preview or else pre-check before your changes goes to local. This will give you, this will help you give a better control on what changes are going to local. We will see all of this practically, okay? I'm explaining you theoretically. In five minutes, we are getting into practicals of seeing these components. So uh, let's imagine how it will give you a control. I'll give you a small example. Suppose there are 10 files in your working directory. You want to move only five files to local. Only those five files will be added to staging area, right? So it will help you in a way to control which changes are going to your local, which changes are there on your, or uh, um, like a, a, a working directory. So it will give you, it works like a preview and help you control which changes are going to local, right? So from working directory, they go to staging area. From staging area, they go to local repository. From local repository, they goes to a remote repository. This is the Git architecture or Git tree. That's how changes move from one area to other area. Got this clear, all of you? So here I would like to give you a few uh, things. First thing is, imagine this local repository is a folder or a directory. If you are a Linux person, imagine that's a uh, directory or a folder, whatever you call it. And you get this when you copy it from remote. How do you create this local repository first? How to create this local repository? There were multiple use cases. First one is, Okay, let's suppose you joined a project. It was a six-year-old project. Already there is something on remote. You want to make ch some changes there. You are given a task to make some changes. So you create a local by copying from remote repository. What are the commands we will learn? But this is the use case. Copy from remote and create a local. This is one of the use cases. Second use case is, suppose you join the project. It's a fresh project, new project starting from scratch. There's nothing on remote. So you have to create, you have to create an empty local repository, develop your changes there, then move to remote. So one is from one, uh, the one way to create a local repository is copy from remote. Another way is create an empty local repository, make your changes and then push to remote. Those are the two use cases. We'll see both of them. Today, we'll get started with this. Assume that it's a new project, there's nothing on remote, and we'll create a local. This is how we get started, right? So, being said that, okay, local repository is nothing but a folder or a directory. 
Okay, even this working directory is obviously another folder or a directory. Right. So first you make changes in a working directory, make your changes, move to staging area. From there you move to local. This is the hierarchy or the flow that works. Right. So here another interesting part you need to make a note of it is so this working directory, this local repository are physically the same folder. Right? Interesting, isn't it? When it is same folder, how come you say working directory and how come you say local repository is same? Just imagine the overlap. It is the, those three layers are same actually, the same folder. Right? You don't imagine like three parts, just overlap one above the other. It's the same folder. If that is the case, how come you call it a working directory, local repository? Physically, they are same. It's just one and the same folder. Logically, they are different. How is that possible? See, listen here very carefully. Git is very interesting to use and easy to use if you learn these, if you know these fundamentals and basics. People start working or using it without knowing these concepts. So try to concentrate here. Working directory, local repository is the same folder. Okay, let's say this is the folder, which will be, let's say some folder name is demo. This is your local repository. This is your working directory. How come you call the same local repository and working directory? Suppose if you have just created a file here, that's all. You just kept a file. Maybe you copied from somewhere or you created whatever it is. You just created a file means it's said to be in the working directory. If you run the command git add on that particular file, then it will be in the staging area. Suppose then if you run the command git commit, then your changes are set to be in the local repository. Physically, it's in the same folder. This is the folder where you have the file. But according to how you manage it, the status changes, whether it is in working directory or staging area or the local repository. Got the logic, everyone? Any questions? Yes, I got the point, but I just have a question to make. Oh, okay. uh, so you said logically it's divided into three areas, but physically it points to the same folder. Hmm. Now, if it has to go to the remote repository, it has to be committed to the local repository, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. After git commit only, you can do git push. After this, we'll do git push. We'll learn it separately, but yeah, this is the order. Every file should first go to the working directory, means it should be in the working directory in the same folder. Then it should be added. You can't skip any, ske any step. You can't skip step two and go to step three. No, you can't skip step three and go to step four. Step four is git push. No, not possible. Okay, thank you. So now that we understood this theoretically, let us see practically how you have a same folder as working directory, local repository. Let's, uh, let's have a look at this practically. First, let us install Git. By the way, Git works on multiple operating system. Git works on Windows, Linux, Mac, and so on. So you don't need to go with the Linux only in this particular case. You can use your local computer. If your local computer is Windows or a Mac or anything or a Linux, you can just go with the Git. Okay, will you be using local computer only for Git as of now? If you know Git on Windows, the same commands are same, concepts are same, whether it is Mac or Linux or whatever it is. Okay, only the installation differs. So uh, you have all the steps, all the... <clears throat> URLs available in the drive, but this is how you should do because, okay, let me first take you to the drive. This is the drive which you'll be having access to and here is the one git and the first part or git installation on Windows, you have this. If it is on Windows, you have including the screenshots. If it is Mac or Linux, it's only one step. So it's a very one line command you have in Mac or Linux. So you get installation steps, including the screenshots are available and the URL is also available. But rather than uh, saving or relying on this, see the process, go to Google and type in Git downloads. 
go to git scm the official website see here downloads so depending on your environment if it is windows yes download the executable and just run the exe i believe you all know how to download an exe and run an exe for any software but still help is here like you should just click on next and go through that installation wizard once it is uh, i mean that's how you install in windows if it is linux it's a single command depending on your distribution app get install git or depending on your linux distribution you have the commands okay if it is mac again a single command brew install git will do so install git once it is installed if you are on windows go to your start menu and run git bash see here go to it is showing including a screenshot go to start menu and open your git bash that's a terminal where you can run all git commands if it is linux just launch your terminal same is the case with a mac i'm using mac so here is my terminal it is installed on my system you can check the git version this way i do have Git. perfect okay git is installed on my system but which project or which folder you want git to version control isn't it so um, i'm going to my desktop so here i would like to create some folder which i want to version control with git see i am using cli i believe you all know cli right command line so you may use CLI if it is Windows or uh, Linux or whatever it is, you can uh, launch your uh, command prompt and run the CLI commands. If you are not comfortable with your CLI, just go this way, like how you do in your real uh, life, like just go here, right click, create the folder that way also you can do. It's up to you how you uh, create your folder. Okay, you may create from here, new folder. This is how you may create or else i would prefer cli simple cli command to create the folder is mkdr make folder git demo okay this is going to be my project where i kept my project files i believe you all know this cli commands anyway we will be learning them separately in linux class so you may use your gui if you are not comfortable with cli now go to this folder okay how do you go to the folder if you are using gui you all know like you double click see this is the one go there this is how you do if you are using cli cd means change directory go there ls will list all the files there is nothing here now i would create the files but before that this is the folder i want to make it as a local repository this is the folder i want to make it as a working directory both are same right also, the whole point is this is the folder where I'm going to keep my project files and I want to and I want Git to version control those project files. How do you tell Git to version control this folder? There were hundreds of folders in my system. There were hundred folders in my system. <clears throat> so whichever folder you want Git to version control, go to that folder and give the command Git init. Git init means initialize git or start git or else tell git that please version control all the files in this particular directory. So run this command. See, it tells you initialize empty git repository. See, I'm taking up the second use case. I assume that there is nothing on remote and I'm creating an empty local git repository. So it started git repository means now, whatever files, anything present in this folder will be version controlled by Git. How can you confirm? You can confirm this folder will have .git directory, a hidden folder. Means this is nothing but your local repository. This is nothing but your uh, working directory. Am I clear? If you want to use GUI, yes. Here are the, like, this is your folder. And you can see all the hidden files as well. I'll show you here. Okay, so this is how you create a folder. This folder is nothing but your local repository or the working directory. Am I clear till this much, everyone? Yes. So, yeah, uh, see, if you go to some other random folder, let's say you go to some other random folder, 
you can't run any git commands you can run git commands here only just give me a second Yeah, can you see the hidden folder? Right, in Windows, you can see the option, I mean, show the hidden files. In Mac also, you can see dot .git. Now, here you can run all the git commands, whereas here you don't have that hidden folder or you can't run any command. So, whichever folder having dot .git, understand that that's a local repository or that's a working directory. Is there any command to find hidden folder? On Mac, it is command shift dot. Command shift period in Mac. You run command shift period, you can see this on Mac. On Windows, there will be an option here. View under view, you can see show hidden files. Okay, done. So now that, okay, local repository is ready, let us run some commands, git status. Okay, the, it says there's nothing to commit. Let me create some file. Again, you may create some file just by going to the UI. You know how to create, right? Right click and create it. Or else I'm going to create from here using touch uh, file one dot text. I'm creating some <clears throat> text files. My intention is not to um, uh, create an actual file. My focus is on version controlling themselves. So any dummy files will do. Or if you are interested or if you have any other idea you can like any other uh, program or any other scripts you can also create them for now i'm just creating some sample dummy text file file is created ls will show the files or else if you just go you can see the files here all right now i want to know where is this file see it tells you git know there is a file but it is not tracking it Git know there is a file and it's not tracking it. It's untracked and it is giving you a clue. Use git add to track. Means where is the file? See, always this architectural diagram should be kept in your mind. So now tell me where is the file? Some time back we were talking about when you create a file means where is the file? Working directory. Working directory and it is saying that it's untracked. It's asking us to add to staging area to track it. So now where is this file called as? Like where do you, some if someone asks you where is this file, is it in working directory or staging area or local repository? Working directory. Working directory. And it is giving us a clue to add. Okay, let's add it. Git add file one. Now again, I want to know where is it? Can you tell me where is it? What would be the status message showing us? Uh, staging area. Changes to be committed. To be committed means where is it? Staging staging area. It is in the staging area. See, changes to be committed. Now I want to commit them. Git commit. Minus M is mandatory. M for message. I'll give something like first file or something like that. Like a comment. Done. Now if you see the status. Working tree is clean. What is meant by working tree is clean? Whatever changes in working directory were moved to local repository. Now file one is in. Local repository. Repos ls will show the files in the folder. Git ls files will show the files and folders in the local repository. Understood? How are sa same folder? This git demo is a local repository. This git demo is a working directory. Shall we repeat it with another file so that it should be clear for all of you? Yes. Say I am creating another file. Okay, I'm not placing any content, some dummy file. My focus is on version controlling it. So, can you tell me where is this file? File 2 is in? Directory. LS will list the files. It is in the working directory. Git LS files will list only the files in the staging area. See, file 2 is not listed. Because it's only in the working directory. What do you have to do? Git add. Git status which show as, shows as untracked. Means git know there is a file, but it can track it only when you add it. So, 
file two. Okay, done. Now, if you see the, where is the file now? Staging area. Staging area. And it answers, answers changes to be committed. Okay, fine. I'll commit them with a the message. Second file. Right. And now if you check the status, it would okay. show that working tree as clean. And now if you do ls, of course, they were in the working directory. But here, yes, now file to is listed. Right. This is how your changes moves from staging area to local repository and so on. This is how the GitHub, this is the same folder, one and the same folder. That's how they are different. Interesting, isn't it? So we did not remember, we did not go to remote it. We were still in local. Before we go to remote, there were many things we need to learn here. So we were still in this yellow box. Okay, we will learn. We have to learn many things here before we go to remote. Then we will talk about remote. GitHub, Bitbucket comes under this remote. We will learn them later. Okay, for now, yeah, we were uh, on local repository. Hope the statements we made earlier were clear now, right? They are all same folder. Okay. So uh, now uh, let's say, see, we created new files. It may not be always creating new files, right? You may also modify them. You may edit them, isn't it? Yeah, correct. Like you might have some done some modifications there. All of that also will be there. It's not always creating new files. So we can edit those files. So how do you edit those files? Simple like uh, you yeah. may just go to this folder, open this in a notepad or notepad plus plus, your choice, right? This notepad, notepad plus plus, these are all different editors, which will help you edit the file, isn't it? See, so open with uh, notes or notepad or script editors and so on, right? These are all different editors you have. If it is Mac, yeah, different editors. Windows, again, some supported editors. Or Linux, you have VI editor. VI means it will open in an editor or Vim editors. We will learn them separately in Linux classes. So you may use any editor of your choice and edit the file. Let's suppose I'll use some notepad. Okay, I'm just modifying this. Uh, see, I'm opening some one It's not launching. Okay, let me. Open. It's opened in that uh, Linux, I believe. Hmm? It's, it's opened in the Linux side, I believe. No, no, it doesn't open. It just said it, it will launch. That's all. Okay, see here, I opened in some editor. Okay, like let's say I'm just writing some dummy lines. Okay, and then save it. It's duplicating, whatever. Okay, I may just modify this way. Right? So, use your editor. Use any editor of your choice and you may modify them. Or else I may use some Linux editor. I will teach you this separately if you are new. Vim editor and uh, escape I and put some lines and save it. Okay, this is another way from the Linux way of doing it. Anyway, changes are done. Now, if you see the status... What does it give you? Changes not staged. Means whether it is a, see, Git works with respect to change. This change could be creating a new file or this change could be deleting a file or this change could be editing a file. All of them will be considered as modifications or editing only. Uh, sorry, all of them will be considered as change only. Any change will go to the working directory, staging area, local repository, whatever be the change. Like I said, your change could be anything. It works with respect to changes. Now, th there is a modification. Again, it goes through the same process. So can you tell me where is this modified line present now? Working and directory. Yes, you have to add it, move to staging, then commit it like you made a new file. The process is same, but only one difference is it says unstaged, right? Unstaged means not staged, right? It no, is not, not staged. 
which so, means is it till it is it still in the working directory when it says unstaged yes yes it's already file is there it's not a new file right it's already there in staging area but only modifications if it's a new file you remember some time back right it shows like untracked do you remember what is the difference between untracked and unstaged New file, it's not there in staging or local. Um, it's not there in working directory or staging, right? Whereas unstaged yes. is already there. It's not a new file. So by seeing the status message, by this message, you can understand a lot many things. This is again a very important understanding one should have. Difference between unstaged and untracked. So if it is untracked, what did we do? Git add, git commit, right? Here also same git add, git commit. But there is one more flexibility over unstaged changes. You can do them separately or else you can do it with minus am, a single command. Am means add and commit. For unstaged, you can do this way. For untracked, you can't do this. You have to do them separately only. That's the difference you have. Understood? Because the file is already there in the staging area. So, shall I use single command now? Git commit minus a m. Let's say file modified. Perfect. Every Get. time you need to enter the message in the quotes, file modified kind of, it's, it's a mandatory? It's mandatory. M flag is mandatory, but that message is user defined. You can give a relevant message upon, like, let's say in reality, maybe some I'm writing some config files, Terraform config files, and that's to create some virtual machine so i would add some comment like okay these changes are related to creating some instance so a relevant comment so that later on you could identify what your changes are about right so now ls it's uh, showing two files git status it shows everything clean got it are we good yes and also, like we were, I told you, you can use any editor of your choice. You may use Vim editor or whatever, VI editor, nano editors or notepad, notepad plus plus. But in reality, as we progress for developers also, they might be uh, creating some Python files or uh, .NET program files, whatever it is, right? They might be using some different programming language. As a DevOps person, we do some configuration. So... We can use a better a better editor, which is used in reality, which is called Visual Studio Code Editor. Even companies were looking for hands-on on this. Right? So you should be used to it. Most widely used one. There were so many editors or IDs, which are used by developers and DevOps teams, which help you modify your files better and lot many advantages. What are other advantages? We will discuss as we progress. So you can download this. It's very simple. Uh, download here, depending on your operating system, choose your OS and download it. See here, Windows or Linux or Mac, download accordingly. And once you download it, just launch it. It's as simple as that. Even those that URL, those steps are available here in the uh, document in the drive. Everything will be available. here. So I have got that installed and let me launch it. Better editor rather than using some unprofessional editors. This is the editor you can use. A professional way of editing. You are expected to have hands-on experience on such editors. So this will help you. So uh, I just launched the editor. Go to file and open the folder. What is my pro folder name? On the desktop, I have git demo. So this is very nice, right? You can see your uh, uh, files here. Also, you could launch your terminal here itself. Rather than launching another window, you could launch your terminal here itself. Very easy, isn't it? So this is the better way to edit rather than using any other editors. So get used to it as well. You can download it and keep using this. So okay. in Google, what is the name we need to download? Huh? Visual no. Studio Code. Yes. VS Code Editor or Visual Studio Code Editor. The link is given in your Google Drive or else you can search in the Google this way, right? So from now onwards, we'll be using it. 
Okay, fine. Let's come back to it. Okay, we made some bunch of commits. How many commits we have done? Like how many times we ran commit command till now? All of that, yeah, all of that commit history can be seen with a command called git log. See, for every commit you do, means for every commit command, there will be a hash code generated, which is alphanumeric. Okay, and the author name who made the changes, that's how I logged into my system. That system uh, date and time when you made the changes, right? This is what is logging. We were talking about logging as well, right? One of the feature which provides a detailed logging on which person made what changes at what file kind of. So log will give you the complete history. And this is your commit message. You do remember, right? You put a commit message. Because after six months, after come some couple of days, if I want to know, okay, what this commit is for, this message will help us. Okay, this commit is made for so-and-so purpose. So give some relevant, meaningful message. In reality, also, we would give a meaningful message so that anyone or even myself can understand what this is about. Of course, these are confined for myself only because I did not push to remote. I'll push to remote, okay? But before that, there were so many things we need to learn. Okay. And if you want to see just a simple log, a brief log, not a detailed one, git log. See, it will show you the history with only first seven characters are enough. You don't need the entire hash code and the commit message. A brief log, git log one line. Right. That's how you can see the commit history in brief. These are the simple uh, commands. And this git demo is your local repository, the working directory. Here you can see this. Any queries from anyone in this part? So obviously the log file will have any rotation kind of or it will be there from the time of the git installation and committing. Uh, log command or log file? Which file? I mean, uh, log. Uh, whenever we are uh, seeing the uh, git log, it mm. is giving all the details, right? For example, I wanted to see um, after two years or three years, it mm. will have all the information or any rotation of the um, file will be okay. there. Okay, you are log, you can see the complete log always at any point of time. It will not be erased kind of. This is specific git command. So it will show you what are all the changes happen here. Okay, see uh, git commands, there were many commands and on every command, there were so many flags like this, like one line or you can customize means as per your requirement, you can use those flags. You don't need to remember or by heart those flags. How to see all those flags? Like you said, okay, I want to see log of, let's say log of two years. Our log will be there, but I'm just adding on top of it. Suppose you want to see log of a specific date. It's possible. You want to see log of a particular file. Possible. You want to see the log in a different format. Yes, possible. All of them are possible. You have different flags. I'll show you one simple thing. Uh, git log. I want to see log of only file one. See? You can see only commits happen on that file or else related to that file, right? Similarly, you want to see log of a specific date. You have so many things. You don't need to memorize or by heart remember them. It doesn't work. No one does that. But what you should know is as per your requirement, you should be able to explore. How do you do that? Git log help command, right? It will open the man page. See here, this is the manual, git manual. It will show you git log, what it does, show commit log, synopsis, okay, description. And if you just scroll down with your up and down arrows, see options, follow option, no decorate, decorate, clear decoration, source, full difference, log size. Do you see all of that? Log size. If you want to see only 10 logs or whatever, you can do that. Or else start and end of the file, you can do that. What not? So many things. It was explained in very clearly. You can go through it and customize. See, since date, after date, or skip some logs, like until date, before date, show commits older than a specific date. 
right? Author, you want to see logs only from a particular author or from a particular committer. All of that possible. See, so many flags. No one memorizes them or no one remembers or by hearts them. As per your requirement, this is how you can do. Am I making sense? So for any command, okay? Yeah, yeah. For any command, this is how you can explore. From CLI, that's how git log help or else you can also check from the official page, official documentation, like this is the official page. Go to documentation. This is where you have reference manual. You can search here. See, you will see the all the commands listed. See, inspection and comparison, you have log. And also, by the way, it's not that, like I told you, every tool, I can teach this tool for six months also. See this documentation? Even only Git you can learn for six months. But that doesn't work, that you don't need it. So whatever required, I have designed and I'm showing. But still later on, if you want to explore or search, this should be your uh, reference. Always make a habit to go through the official references. Okay, so here is the log. And again, whatever we saw in the man pages, everything is here in the browser. If you prefer this, you could also go through this way. It's up to you how you refer, how you want to manage or do anything with it. See, log dot decorate, log dot data, a lot more things you have. So this should this be... This log file is uh, um, uh, storing into the way that Git is installed, right? Or... Uh... That's not a file, first of all. That's not a log file. Okay, that's just oh, showing oh. output on the terminal. Okay, that is that these are the commands, git commands. Okay, that's a git object you can say. Git log will show you the commit history. Okay, so where it is storing this data? Somewhere it needs to store the data, right? Here only it will store in the dot git. You have dot git, right? Okay. Dot git, all the metadata will be stored, but it's irrelevant. Okay. We have nothing to do with these folders. Okay. You mm -hmm. have to understand dot git should be there. That's all. Yes. Ma'am, what is the uh, percentage of git uh, usage uh, more by developer team or ops team? Like I already informed you, everyone will be using it. Right, to, from two perspectives. One, to manage your files, manage your project files, which we were learning first. Then from the perspective of CACD, everyone should learn Git. Not only developers, DevOps teams, testers should learn it. Everyone should learn it. Okay. Ma'am, one question here. Why are we using editor when Eclipse and uh, Visual Code even are used by developers? It was the use for the DevOps people. DevOps people, one reason, like I told already, right? We'll be using it to manage our files. We do have Kubernetes manifest files, Terraform config files, Ansible playbooks. We use all these tools. We do have their configuration files. How do you manage them? Right? You have to modify, you have to work with them, right? So mm -hmm. these editors will help you with auto completion, syntax highlighting, and many other things. So that's the reason we go for it. Okay. It's not coding, but it's configuration files where we use templates. So this help you manage them better. See, this editor is used by everyone. Like I told, development teams, testing team, and so on. Uh, like it supports all of these with the plugins. If you go for, see, Terraform plugin you have. You can connect remotely to, a, I mean, connect a, a via SS to remote machines from this editor. So many other advantages. You have Docker files, you have Docker uh, config files where which can be supported by this editor. So always make a habit of using such editors. Not of a DevOps uh, friendly kind of. For, not only for DevOps, everyone will use it. Developers, testing teams. It supports multiple languages, multiple configuration files, multiple tools. Here you have extensions. You can install so many extensions related to Docker. These are all it's showing as recommended plugins you can install. Okay. And I'll show you one more command. Um, so suppose I have given here some command message like this. If you want to edit the commit message of the topmost command, you can do it. Edit the message of a topmost command. 
how do you do that the topmost command means uh, sort of topmost commit means this is the latest or the topmost right the may the commit which we made uh, recently so you can modify that commit message using git commit amend right git commit amend see that will take you to some linux editor you have to go into the insert mode by escape i and modify it like new or else let's say if i want to complete this new modification and save it how do you save escape mode escape mode is command mode here insert is gone escape wq exclamatory to save it now the message might have been changed do you see that of course commit id also changed that's just to if you want to adjust your commit message later that's how you can do it. what is that uh, command pretty sorry was amend amend flag there were so many flags as such okay uh, as per the requirement you could search the documentation for such uh, things but yeah that's how you can modify okay so today what we did we created some new files we have moved them to working directory staging area local repository we have modified the file like i told you git works with respect to changes change could be creating a file modifying a file or deleting a file right we have seen modifying creating how about deleting the file isn't it can we delete these files and still git can track them or how git works with the deletions right so we will we'll look into that uh, maybe like we can take up from here in the next class as it is a day one get your git setup done do some hands-on on this basics and we'll proceed from here but class is not yet done okay don't leave i just want to share you a few more things um Once any class, any session is done, yes, definitely you should do the hands-on on whatever we discuss. It's a day one, so just simple uh, examples or simple things we have done. Just go to the portal here. Okay, and here on the Git, this is the quiz you have to go to. I'm sharing it for now, for today. You can go through and I would be receiving your responses so that I can see how much you have understood. I'm sharing that uh, link over the Zoom chat. Can you please go over that? And there will be some questions definitely which were not covered. That's the idea for you to explore or answer or think about it. And uh, so that they'll be registered in your mind. We'll cover those things tomorrow. Particular commit message you can't uh, edit, Surya. Only the latest commit message you can edit. Any more questions you have or anything else you have, you can ask me. I'm like, uh, th this Google Drive will be shared with you where you have all the references, right? In this Git folder is the one where you have all references that will be shared with you when you are doing hands-on. Also, the class recording will be shared. Have you all received the quiz? Please go through it and I could see the responses once you submit them.
Were you all going through it? Yes. Right. Yes. Uh, done, madam. Thank you. Have you submitted? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I got it. You also got the scores, right? Yeah. Can you share your email ID, whoever submitted? Yeah, I have uh, three responses. So, uh, like, whatever corrections or whatever uh, questions you went wrong, just retro your uh, answers, go through the recording, right? Register your answers once again, like go through them and correct it. So that that's how you can improvise your scores and make your learning better. Okay, so, Pratisha also have submitted. I got responses from Rahul, Sauvik, Sunil. Responses were good. Yeah, great. Like wherever you went wrong, just retro your answers, go through the recordings once again and go through this quiz. Once how, you... do you, hmm. how do you know the right and wrong, madam? You are getting the response, right? You got the results? No, I did not get it. Just a submitted. Anyone got the results or not? Got it. Got it. You can. You have to click on submit uh, view response. I believe. Yeah, there will be an option to see the responses. Yeah, I got the 10, 10 out of 15. Uh, yeah. yeah, there is five, five wrong in that. Yeah, yes, that's your score. Yes, uh, Santosh, get commit help for any command if you want to see yeah. the other options. Yeah, the answer that is from, uh, there is a single icon before I. Huh? In the answers, uh, whatever the question has, a uh, single item is there. Where is it? it? In, the, in the question. Hmm. Which question is it? What is the command to see the available options for the commit command? See, whatever you have available, whatever you are seeing there, that's the most relevant one, right? Of course, yeah, it's a hyphen hyphen. But yeah, the relevant one you can answer for now. Uh, Priti, uh, there is a question at the end of that. Uh, what is the shortcut to stage all the changes we have? Uh, can you make it uh, more there clear? Is, what is the shortcut to stage all the changes we have? Yeah. Shortcut to stage. See, git add file name will add the, a particular file to staging, right? But mm -hmm. let's say you have so many files. If you want to stage all of them, git add dot. Dot will add all the files. 
okay then the the dot is oh sorry i thought of like it's a full stop one okay yeah we did not see those command yeah and uh, one more like uh, is there any specific uh, like commands uh, which are uh, generally used in this uh, linux or, or like this so we can go through that like uh, without going through whole all the commands what we have in that uh, documentation can we have like any specific like 50 commands or like this which we have to use in our daily day to day uh, like in uh, this uh, linux things so that we can uh, prior to starting and we can go through those any any specific numbers i'm asking we have we, can... uh, we have some week okay once we start uh, linux we'll go through them or else if you want to go through them you do have that in the drive okay in the drive here you have uh, linux basics here are the basic commands which one should know we'll be starting at a separate yeah. topic and go through it but still if you want to go through at this point yes you have it in the drive Sure. sure, thank you. Yes, Rekha and Surya re uh, received your responses. So cross check your answers and go through your recordings. And uh, you could also, after doing hands on, also you can retake those quizzes to check your understanding and to validate your improvisation. Sure, thank you. All right, then that's all from my end for today. And we'll continue from here in the next session. Thank you all. Good day. See you. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.